I collaborated with 31 different crochet artists every day for an entire month, and here's how that went. So this all started because I had this idea that I thought it'd be really cool to do a different giveaway every single day for the whole month of May for Amaguru May. So when I first thought of this, I was like, okay, this sounds a bit insane and like it'd be so much work. But I mentioned it to a couple of friends to see what they would say. And they all thought it was a cool idea, but they also said, Naomi, I think that might be way too much work you're getting yourself into. I kind of was like, should I really do this? I don't know. Once I had thought of the idea, like I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I just thought it'd be so much fun to collaborate with different creators. And I thought it would be a really fun way to shine a light on some smaller creators and also give back to the amazing crochet community. So once I sort of knew for sure that this was something I wanted to do, I had no idea how to go about it. And I was also a bit nervous to reach out to people because I still wasn't like confident that I would be able to pull this off. So I posted on my story very aloof. <laughs> Basically, I said, I'm working on a secret project. I need other Amagurumi designers. Let me know if you'd be interested. And so I kept it really vague because I didn't want to like spoil anything. Like if people said, oh yeah, I know that they actually would want to because they had no idea what this idea was that I had. At that point, like I knew I wanted to give away patterns and I wasn't sure all the logistics of it, but I was thinking every day a creator would give away one of their patterns and I'd give away one of mine. I did end up pulling a few people that did respond to my story. Crochet by Jenna was one of them. Um, she was like, yeah, you know, I was gonna just like make up what she said. I'm sorry, Jenna. <laughs> I don't remember her exact wording. Maybe I can find it. So one thing I really wanted to make sure I did was get accounts from all different sizes, which is one of the biggest reasons I did branch out from just looking at that list because I wanted some creators as big as me or bigger even to help get the word out about it. I thought like those would be the people that would really help as many people as possible get their eyes on this. And then I wanted some mid-sized creators that just I think deserve a bit more attention, but also have quite a few followers already. And then I also wanted some really smaller creators that I think just are so talented and needed more of a spotlight. That way I figured I could help shine a light on these smaller creators and help a lot of people learn about them but also still get those other bigger creators that would help spread this around to a bigger audience. So I had no clue the best way to go about planning this because I was like there's so many different people I'm gonna have to keep track of. I need to figure out who's gonna go on what day, how to make sure everybody has a day that works for them and I was a bit overwhelmed and so I decided the best approach would have been to do a spreadsheet. So basically when I'd reach out to someone I would send them a spreadsheet that basically had a bunch of different columns. It would say like your name and your username, what pattern do you want to give away and you'd sign up for the date. And I also had like a little checklist to be like okay after you send me everything let me know. Another thing I was worried about is that like I'd be asking all these crocheters to send me their patterns and all this other information. How would I keep track of it? So I first went by making a different email because I had a feeling I was like I just know that it's gonna be so hard in my normal business email to keep track of everything and not lose all these different patterns and things. So basically I had a separate email I made just for people to send me things. So then I like slowly started reaching out to people. I didn't want to overwhelm things and like have you know 20 people trying to fill in the stock at the same time or accidentally ask too many people and I wanted to make sure I was keeping track of the account sizes as well. So I started in really small batches. I started by asking a few people who had replied to my story because I knew that they were interested in doing something with me. And then I wanted to focus on some of the bigger creators I was going to ask because I thought in terms of trying to figure out scheduling and have them spaced out it'd be nice to have options. And luckily I already have had a good relationship with a lot of these creators so it wasn't like I'm just reaching to them out of the blue. Most of them I've either you know DM'd with or worked with in some other way or have had some other relationship with or even just commented on each other's posts or we follow each other so it's not like me I was reaching out to a bunch of people who I had no connection with. In fact honestly there was like one or two people that I kind of wanted to ask but they didn't follow me back and I didn't have a connection with them and I just thought I want to make sure I really have a good relationship with the people I'm asking for the bigger creators especially so I just decided to stick with people that like I know and trust. So some of the first people I reached out to were Jade from All From Jade, Allison from The Wonder Crochet, Annabelle from Crochet Grove, Lori from Crafting and Glory, Katie from Zero Gravity Crochet, Jenna from Crochet by Jenna, Zach from Crochet Me Zaddy, and a few others. So these were some of like the bigger names I want to have to help hype things up and keep the attention on this event. So then I reached out to some mid-sized creators and obviously these are also like big amazing accounts. I'm trying to <laughs> differentiate for the storytelling in terms of like follower size I guess. To be fair like I was asking different people throughout this whole thing. I wasn't like only asking big creators creators at first then only asking you know medium sized ones but I'm just kind of explaining it like that because I feel like it just might make it a bit easier and that was sort of like my general process but if I thought of someone that I thought would be perfect for this I would ask them in between regardless of you know account size or anything like that. I also wanted to make sure I picked people with a variety of different styles because I thought that would be a really fun way to make sure that everyone could find different creators that they might not know yet so 
I made sure I picked some lobbies like Mama Made Minis. I made sure I picked some fantasy elements. I tried to have like a mix of basically a little bit of everything. So as I was starting to reach out to people, it was awesome that I was seeing so many people were excited about this. It meant so much to me. Again, I, I do think it's really helpful that I had good connections in the community. One of my biggest fears going into this was that I would have to be chasing people down and people wouldn't have be sending me things that they need to send me. And that didn't happen too much. Luckily, there were was a few times I had to ask people to make sure they signed up. And I felt bad. I kind of had to push people a little bit. But for me, it was just I had so much anxiety about like not getting this done in time that I wanted to really make sure I had everything done well in advance. So I did have to bug people a little bit, but luckily everyone was super understanding about it. So once I started getting a good amount of people that had filled out the form, I was like, okay, I wanna as soon as possible start figuring out how to organize this and like the design and things like that because I just wanted to make sure I had so much time to prepare. I think when I started reaching out to people, it was about like a month in advance. Like it was kind of like early April, maybe up to like the second week of April. So I knew that doing all the design and everything would be a lot of work, but I still managed to so severely underestimate how much work it was going to be. So I had to come up with like themes for everything and how to hype things up and also make a post for every single person's pattern. So here's what I have to say, I could not have done this without the help of my friend Zoe from Garden Hole Crochet. You might know her as the snail cancel lady. <laughs> she seriously played such an important role in helping me figure out all these design elements. I don't know how I would have done this without her. So I cannot thank her enough. If you haven't checked her out before, go follow her on Instagram and check out her snail council. All of her snails are amazing. So when we wanted to figure out the designs for everybody's posts, we thought at first it would make sense to have a few different options. So like, you know, some more minimalist, some more rainbow elements, out there just a bunch of different styles so that people could pick what sort of they wanted and then we realized we weren't really sure how that would work because if we had like let's say four different styles but the same style would be picked by people like five days in a row that would be kind of odd to then randomly have you know here and there some other random ones like we you know what I mean? we ended up just sticking with one it was definitely like a bit more busy than i think we would have probably meant to do we, i don't know we just loved it so much here's kind of like an example of what it looked like and so we sort of decided to run with it and make this a whole theme of it so for everybody's page we basically were going to keep that exact design but change the colors based on the person for most of them we started by telling canva to apply the colors to the page of either the pattern or their logo depending and if we liked it we'd mess around with that if not, we'd keep trying or just hope we could find something that worked. For a lot, it, that worked pretty well. Obviously, we had to do a lot of tweaking in there, but like to help find the general color palette of each one, that, that was very helpful. And I'd always, a few days before, reach out to the person whose day it was in a couple days so they could like, you know, give their approval or ask if they wanted any changes done. So mainly the changes that did happen were about like wanting the colors to be more along their brand colors, which is totally fair. It was just hard, I think, to do everything meticulous for this many people and figure out everyone's brand colors because some people's it's super easy but if they have like a photo of them you can't necessarily pull their brand colors from that so <laughs> but like I can't even tell you how long this took so we had to obviously edit every single page to include the proper date for that person and the username and their photos and then we had to change the design every day to try to match theirs and it was around this point that Zoe was like Naomi you know your feed is gonna look absolutely insane <laughs> and I was like oh <laughs> Yeah. Now, I'm not someone who cares too much about aesthetics, like, at all. Um, you'll probably notice that if you look at my page, but I knew that this would look super hectic. At this point, I was like, we're in too deep. I'm just accepting it. We're just going with it. <laughs> so we wanted to figure out a way to, like, hype this up. And so a few days before, I posted something that just said, like, your favorite amigurumi designers have a secret. Come back on April 30th to find out what it is. And so the day before it started, I was going to reveal what it was. Which also, side note, this is also how Zoe and I were reminded that April does not have 31 days because originally we had April 31st on everything and then had to go back and fix them all because we realized that that does not exist. <laughs> That's also honestly why it's so helpful to have like a second person to look over things if you're ever trying to plan something, especially this big, but even on a small scale, because there's so many little details that you can easily just forget about and miss that you're like, how did I not realize that? You know what I mean? So once I posted that, it was great because so many of the creators that were involved with it would share it and a lot of other people would just share it so excited to see what it would be so we got lots of comments and engagement and so i was that like hyped me up so much more i was like all of this work is worth it this is gonna be like the best thing ever and then i think it was the day before the post went live so it would have been like probably april 29th 
at night. I was like, wouldn't it be so cool to get all of these creators in on a reel together? I was like, why did I not think of this sooner? Oh my gosh, this is so last minute. So I had no idea if everyone would be able to be in on it because basically I was giving them like a little, little bit over 24 hours to somehow be involved. And to my surprise, almost every single person was able to join in. Some people had to send me an old clip of theirs, but I was like, I'll edit around it, I'll make it work. Honestly, I loved how the reel turned out. I think it is so much fun. I'll post a link to it below so you can see it, but it was so cool seeing the faces of everybody that was involved. So on April 30th, I revealed it and people were so excited and that made me so happy. It was getting a lot of shares and excitement and people were looking forward to the whole month of it. I think having a mix of big creators and small creators was great because people were really hyped up to see their favorite creators, but also people were like, oh, I don't know this person. Some of my friends said that even just from that first announcement post, they got quite a few new followers. So that was really cool as well. Even if, you know, some people might not be able to see every single day or enter every day, just from that announcement post alone, so many people found new creators to follow, which was so fun. So that announcement post, I basically, I posted this, and then I had like photos of everyone that was going to be in it. And I decided to not share who was going to be what day. Kind of encourage people to come back every day to check, which I think was good also to help with the smaller creators. So me first, I kicked this off with Crochet Grove and it was so awesome to see such a great reception. We got so many people applying and it was off to an amazing start. And it kept doing, you know, and every day it was doing pretty well. It's things slowed after like the first couple of days, which I think is kind of normal. There's so much hype for it. And then not every day is going to be as huge, right? So to pick the winners, I wanted it to be totally random and I didn't want to have to like put everybody's name in something because I had no idea how many comments we'd get every day. So I basically I found a website where you could do giveaways but you have to pay if you want over a certain amount. I didn't want anything going wrong so I just paid for a month. I'm not <laughs> sponsored by them or anything but I will link it below if anyone wants to check it out. I personally had no issues with it. Honestly it made things run a lot smoother and it was definitely worth paying for just one month of it because it saved me a lot of issues. So basically how that worked is every day I would put in the requirements you have to be following me, the comments had to have at least two tags in it which were the requirements on the post then from there it would like randomly pick one I will check that the comment did do everything that it was supposed to do and then I'd be able to announce that that was the winner for the day no matter how much I tried to plan things in advance every single day I still had to pick a winner and then close that giveaway and announce the winner open another giveaway for the next day and then send the draft to the next day's person to make sure that they were okay with it oh and then of course send the patterns to the winner so it was like a lot to do every single day just on top of everything you know everything else but one of the last people I was waiting for stuff from was crafting and glory and then when she finally sent it to me I, I was like oh my goodness and she thought that like she had to make a free pattern for this which I was like oh my gosh that is so sweet but I would never ask you to do that much work for this. She made a free mini version of her rosy maple moth pattern which I will link below and she's just so talented and sweet. I mean look at this. This is amazing. I was like oh my gosh I need to do something too now so I called Zoe again of course. I need to come up with a new pattern now that I can give away for free because this is so cool. I want to give one away as well and so Zoe ended up working with me again thank gosh for Zoe and we collabed on a pattern which made things a lot easier. So we ended up making this pizza ladybug which honestly I love so much like I am so so happy we ended up making this because I think he is so funny and goofy and cute. I'll link the free pattern below but you can find the printable version and the PDF on my Patreon. So now I think I just reflect on some of my biggest like learning experiences and takeaways from all this. The first one was definitely that this was so much work. It was literally so worth it. Like I am so happy I did it. I do want to do this every year if I can but I have to be mindful that if I were to do it every year for I'm a groomer, it might depend what is going on in my life at that time because this takes a lot. My second biggest takeaway would be I am so grateful for my crochet friends and the crochet community as a whole. It was such an honor to work with all these talented creators. Truly, I feel so blessed. It makes me just so happy inside to know that I have a part in this community and that other people in this community are willing to work with me and help each other out. Like it just makes me so happy. So that was probably the best part about this whole thing. And if this is something you want to do maybe in the future and you're like, well, I don't have those connections. Honestly, the best thing you can do is just start commenting on videos, reaching out to people that you like, make yourself known by them, you know what I mean? Like obviously it's a bit easier for me to make connections now because I am a bigger account so sometimes if I respond to a comment it'll be put in their priority or like you know we follow each other but even when it's a smaller account I tried to make some of these connections with creators just by starting conversations and of course having someone else that you can rely on to help you with these things I think is something I'm so eternally grateful for. Zoe the real MVP could not have done this without her and ever since then every time I need help on camp I'm like Zoe <laughs> and she loves working on canvas so it just it's really great we have fun with it half the time we don't end up even doing much work we just kind of are talking or whatever but it truly means the world to me and I just appreciate her so much. <laughs>
now that I've done it once I think a really cool thing about it is that like if people know about this it might be easier to sort of reach out and find new people that want to join in for future years which I'm very excited about this year I really tried to keep things close to the people I had some connections with or things like that because I'd never done this before but now that if it does become a thing that I do this every year as long as the person's reliable enough I feel like I can really expand who I work with which is really exciting honestly if you want to be in a part of a future one let me know in the comments <laughs> my other biggest takeaway is to just do those ideas you have everyone is so full of self-doubt so am I <laughs> and it's so easy to tell yourself all the reasons why something might not work or what if it fails sometimes you just have to say screw it and take the leap every time I do that I am so happy with the results and I'm so glad I did if things don't work out that's okay but at least you tried right so I think that would be honestly probably my biggest takeaway really is just believe in yourself and if you have a cool idea just go for it so I hope you enjoyed watching this thank you so much if you have any questions about how I pulled this off or how you could do something similar let me know in the comments and if you want to be a part of a future one let me know